Hello, hello. This is Emilio. We're going to be talking about a fun topic. I love storage devices. I love the NAS devices. I've got a whole bunch of them. I've got rack-based ones. I've got ones that are more desktop, ones that are bigger, ones that are smaller, ones that can take a lot more disks. And whether you've got yourself already a NAS or you're thinking about getting one, you're now thinking, well, what should I put inside of it? Is it worth getting just normal disks, normal SATA disks, or should I go for flash-based? Because they're flashy. I would love it if you subscribed. If you wanna watch more of my videos, click on the button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything. Here's the thing. You've gotta have a think about what your NAS is going to be used for. Is it mainly to store files? Is it to install applications and then to be able to use those applications? That will really depend on what hard drives you get inside of it. And it's always that really tricky decision on whether you go for standard disk-based SATA hard drives or whether you go down the flash route. Now, here's the first thing, okay? Here's the first thing. If you want speed, if you want speed, if you want speed, then you go flash. I mean, it's a bit of a no-brainer. If you need performance, you go flash, but it's expensive. That's it. Significantly faster read write speeds compared to traditional hard drives. I mean, you can't even compare the inputs. The It's called IOPS, input output. You're gonna also get quicker boot time, faster access time, much better performance and significantly faster data rate. So let's say you're doing this in a business, a small business, you're even doing this at home. You yourself, you're wanting to use your NAS and get the best, best, best performance that you can out of it. You go down the flash. But then you got the cost. So per gig, they're gonna cost you a lot more than a traditional hard drive. So this can be a significant consideration, especially if you need large amounts of data. You need a lot more data, it's gonna cost you a lot more money because you need to get a lot more storage. Then we've got the energy component. You know, you want, you want lower bills from an electricity perspective. Well, flash hard drives, they don't have all the little moving parts. So they actually consume less energy. Hey, that's a good thing. While the other hard drives, traditional, they're just gonna run hotter. We don't wanna overheat our NAS, do we? Now I said before that there's no moving parts inside of a flash and that's true. So as a result of that, they're potentially going to last a little bit longer. There's less wear and tear. Now that's not always the case because there's no moving parts, it may last longer. You get better durability out of it. But on the flip side, it really depends how often you're using these hard drives and how many read and writes they're getting. SSD sometimes do have a bit of a shelf life. You're not gonna be able to read and write as much as a normal traditional hard drive. But a traditional hard drive, if you bump it, if you knock it, if you're moving it up and down, the needle, all of that sort of jazz, because there's no moving parts, SSDs operate silently. You want a quiet environment? You go down the SSD route. Have you ever heard those clicking sounds that you get on those traditional hard drives? They often mean that the hard drive's gonna fail. So sometimes that's a good thing because you sort of know, hey, the hard drive sounds like it's gonna fail. You don't get that on an SSD. An SSD can just, oh, it's just dead. Now, look, this may change in future, but right now you can get much bigger capacity out of non-flash-based disks. Flash-based, you can still get some that are pretty big, but the cost is going to be significant. So you've got to always consider the cost over the benefit. So now let's talk about the NAS itself, okay? Because we've talked about the differences between the two disks. If your NAS handles all of these mixed workloads, including a mix of random disks, you know, some NASs won't be able to do this, then I would say SSDs are gonna be better because then you get more consistent performance, you're gonna get better speed overall. But on the flip side, if you're needing significant amounts of capacity, you're gonna need to go for ones that are not SSD because you're gonna get a lot more gigabytes, terabytes, it's gonna be a lot lower cost per gig for a traditional hard drive than it will be for an SSD. Another thing that you can consider is when we're talking about SSDs, is we're talking about SSD caching or caching. The SSDs are used to store frequently accessed data while traditional hard drives handle the less frequently accessed information. You know, for me, I personally like going down the hybrid route where I have combinations of the two because this is the nice thing about a NAS, especially if you've got a NAS that is able to have a lot of disks, right? So I've got a NAS, for example, where I can stick eight hard drives inside of it. Well, what I like to do is I have to think about, well, what is my NAS going to be used for? If it's used, for example, for a file server, uh, maybe I've got a database that is running and it's needing some fast disks. Well, this is where I may opt to get a NAS and split it up accordingly 
set up multiple different types of raids on my NAS for different performance requirements. For example, if I need to have some data store that needs, it needs to run really, really fast, lots of read and writes very, very quickly, then I may opt to get a few disks that are SSDs, stick them inside, I then format them in maybe like a RAID 10 configuration, and that's where I put the data that requires fast performance. If I don't need the fast performance, I could maybe then just go and put in traditional disks, format them in a RAID 5, and that's what I use that for. So if you're gonna be using, for example, your NAS for building VMs and using it as a storage for your virtual machines, well, some virtual machines are gonna perform better if you give them better disks, better RAID configuration, and better disks themselves. Have a think about what your NAS is gonna be used for, but I would say to it, it's sometimes good to have a combination. Build your NAS based on the need. Some of that stuff may need a little bit more grunt, a little bit more power, a lot more better bandwidth, then maybe look at getting SSDs for that. And then the other data that is not as frequently accessed, maybe you don't care about the speed necessarily, then you go down for the traditional disks there. Hopefully that helped out. Let us know down below in the comments if it did. Let me know what your combination of disks look like. Love it if you did the subscription thing as well. We'll see you on the next video.